Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to try repasting my North Bridge. It has been running super hot, almost 90 centigrade, uh, which is way too hot. And I haven't had any shutdowns yet, but I was told I should really get on it and fix it. And supposedly it's not even just a thermal paste issue, it's probably one of my pins has come loose. I mean, the computer still works, but uh, I bought these on eBay. It's a whole package of pins. I only need two of them, but you have to cut them a little shorter uh, to get them to fit. And I'm going by the House of Moths video if you want to learn or you want instructions on how to do this. He's the original guy who did this, so I'm just following his steps. As you can see, the North Bridge is sandwiched between, well, it's really under CPU A. So let's get to it. Fingers crossed, because if I screw this up, I'm not going to be able to boot my computer, uh, which is not good because I'm working on some projects. So fingers crossed, better to do it now than to have my computer up and die on me. So I'm just going to speed this way up. Here I am removing my heat sinks. Now my connectors are loose because I removed them. Normally you would just pull straight up on the heat sink. If you look at my other videos, you'll know what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to pull the connector out of heatsink B there, and I just, it was killing my fingers. The thing is jammed in there, I can't get it out. I'm touching the pins to see if they're good on the North Bridge, they seemed okay. But when I tried this again, my hand slipped, and I wound up bending some pins in the CPU socket of CPU B. That's before, and now here's after. I bent them back with a tiny little screwdriver, and the help of a magnifying glass, I was able to bend them to what looks like pretty close to where they were originally. Thankfully, I just kind of glazed across them, but it didn't take much to bend them. So, you know, now I've got that as another issue on top of whether I'm doing the North Bridge properly or not. Um, so here I am trying again to get that damn connector out of there. And I just could not, could not get it out. So I had to do this operation with the heatsink wire still connected to the logic board, which made it more difficult. So I'm removing the nine screws you have to remove to get underneath the logic board because you can't get to the North Bridges pins with the tray still connected to the logic board. And here I am again trying to get that sucker out, and I just could not, and my fingers were really starting to hurt. I even tried using some pliers, which was a terrible idea, and it messed up the plastic connector even further. So thankfully I didn't rip any wires out. So here I am, I'm pushing on the pin on the one side of the logic board and squeezing the other side with my needle nose pliers. And it's like a little arrow that goes through. So there's only really one angle. You gotta grab either side of the arrows and pinch it in and then it will pop out. And you gotta do it to both of them. Uh, I also did not disconnect the wire to the north bridge. I would suggest disconnecting the wire first and then removing the pins. And those pins were in there tight, I gotta be honest. It was a bitch to get them out. I'm sure, you know, House of Moth, he's probably done this 10 times, but for me, it was really hard to push down the spring and grab the needle nose pliers and get that thing to come out. You can see my hands practically shaking from the stress level. And there is our North Bridge. And that thermal paste, which barely looks like it's covering, I mean, other parts of it are stuck on the, uh, the other side here on the heat sink. It just uh, was a crust, hard as a rock, and I had to use a guitar pick to get the stuff off. And that's where my camera died on top of it all, because it took me so frickin' long to do this. But again, you can watch the House of Moths video on this. Um, I'm just showing you a couple of extra things here. Now, here are the pins, the new one on the left and the old one on the right. You can see the old one on the right has a nice round head on it. So when you push down on it, it doesn't hurt your finger. But uh, House of Moss says you gotta cut the top of the head sort of halfway off on the new pin. And when you do that, you have a very sharp edged thing to push down on. And there's a lot of pressure that you have to push through. At least, you know, I found that the springs on the new ones were way less resistant and you can see that they were thicker on the old pins. So the old pins have a very strong spring on them, and the new pins do not. 
The other thing is you have to cut that tube that is on the new clip in half um, because it's too big. So you want to cut that in half and you want to keep the part that you cut in the upper part. You don't want to reverse it by mistake. You want to keep that nice symmetrical tube at the base where it meets the arrow and where it meets the north bridge. You don't want to have an uneven plastic bit there. You want to keep it the way it is. You also have to cut the top of the pin off. And when I did this with my needle nose pliers, it became extremely sharp. And you know, when you go to push this through, when you're putting the heat sink back on, uh, it can really cut into your fingers. So I melted it down with a Bic lighter to smooth it out, uh, which did help quite a bit because the tension's pretty tough when you're pushing this through. So this is what it looked like after I got the North Bridge back on. I re-thermal pasted everything with MX-6. You can see the melted top there just to make it easier to push the pins through. So now it was time to reboot the computer and it didn't boot. And I'm like, God dang it. Do I have to remove both CPUs and start all over again? But I figured, you know, I'm gonna just try removing CPU B, which is the one that had the bent pins, and see if it boots with just CPU A in, which you can do that. You can just have CPU A in, not have B in. Your fans will go 100% up, but at least you know that the North Bridge and CPU A are okay. And sure enough, it booted. So I knew my issue was CPU B and I went in there and I looked at the pins again and I did some slight adjustments, repasted CPU B, put this heat sink back on, stuck it in the computer and she booted with both CPUs successfully. Whew. So I thought there'd be a big difference in the temperature on the North Bridge after repasting it. But the reality is it was only down about eight centigrade, maybe 10. So I went from sort of like 86 to about 79, 78, sometimes 80. So it was not a huge difference. I was surprised. I decided to start using my iStat apps fan controls and just dial up the fans a little bit. And as you can see, I now have it sitting at a nice 66 centigrade and it's got a fair amount of headroom and honestly I don't even hear the fans they're not they're not up that loud but after all that work and repasting the north bridge I would have thought that I would have gotten better temperatures in the end um, so I don't know what's going on maybe it's a bad sensor maybe my north bridge is just hot you know um, I've never had any problems with it and my computer benchmarks well and it's running fine but, uh, you know, a little disappointing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up if you like this video. And I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.